36 George's Morning News, Zoller and Bryant, and honored to be joined by retired Air Force Colonel Lee Ellis, uh, Jackson County, uh, by way of his native home in Georgia. I uh, spent some time as a guest of uh, the people over there in Vietnam, the Hanoi Hilton back in the day, shot down as an Air Force fighter in Vietnam and spent some time in that uh, ignoble place. Uh, back home and writing books, the latest of which is Leadership with Honor. Colonel Ellis, thanks for your time this morning. Hey, good morning. Good to be with you. Leadership with Honor, or Leading with Honor, a book about leadership. Uh, tell me about leadership. Is it something I'm born with, or is it something I can learn over time? Both. We all are born with some characteristics that can help us be good leaders, but we also can learn an awful lot, and that's one of the things I've been doing uh, pretty much full-time for the last 20, 25 years is uh, either running leadership schools or consulting and teaching leadership and writing about it. So it's certainly something that we all need to get better at. Now, uh, Lee, good to have you back with us again. Uh, you returned to Vietnam this year for the first time. Tell us about that. Well, that was kind of an interesting experience. A lot of my friends had already been back and had pretty good experience going to Vietnam in general, but uh, and I did too. I really like the Vietnamese people. Uh, they like us. They don't like the Russians very well. They don't like the Chinese very well. And they don't like the communists very well, but they do like us. So I think we're winning that war uh, every day that goes by. The one downside of it for me was going back to the old prison, which is now a museum, and that was pretty oppressive and heavy and and also the fact that just their, their propaganda lies about their treatment of us was uh, just a little bit upsetting also. But it wasn't, it wasn't unexpected, but it still bothered me. So if I go to that museum today, which was, of course, the Hanoi Hilton when you were there, if I go there today, I'm going to see displays, I'm going to see exhibits that tell me uh, you were treated quite well. Yes, they, they, there's two parts to it. One is how terrible the French treated them, and I don't doubt that. But... Uh, but that was pretty close to the way we were treated. And then the other part is the way they treated the Americans. And they have some photographs from uh, special situations that, you know, photo ops where they take a picture here or there. Like twice a year we had a special meal. And when we went out to pick up the special meal, it was quite a bit more food than we normally had, and it looked a lot better. A, a photographer would step out from around the corner and take a picture of a couple of guys with their special meal, and that becomes the story of how the Americans were treated. Yeah, and, and certainly it wasn't anything like that. I mean, you guys were tortured, let's use that word. Uh, mm -hmm. You guys were um, um, isolated, and it had to have been uh, a very difficult... I mean, I can't even imagine, Lee. My dad was a POW for a year in, in World War II. Um, he didn't want to talk about that. You were, you were more than five years uh, in captivity. Was there ever a moment where you thought, I'm never getting out of here? No, there really wasn't. Uh, you know, I think you have to believe uh, that someday you're going to, things are going to get better. And you do that one day at a time. So you just get through today, and we had a saying, tomorrow's another day. And I think that's a, an important part of staying positive. You know, you have to believe in the future, believe that someday you're going to come out ahead, and you keep uh, doing your part to get there. I believe that God kept me alive for a purpose, and my job was to hang in there and do it, and it was my duty also. Talking with Colonel Lee Ellis, uh, Jackson County and Vietnam veteran, and as we've mentioned, I uh, spent some time uh, with the folks at the Hanoi Hilton over there five years, as I understand it. The book is Leading with Honor. Fast forward to today, a, a different military era then, an all-volunteer military now. Uh, I don't know how, how much time you get to spend around the folks who are serving now, but your observations of them. Yes, I have uh, recently. I've done some speaking and visiting with some of the Air Force bases in particular, and uh, I'm really impressed with the young people. You know, they're very gung-ho, very excited, uh, a little green, you know, the young ones are, but they are uh, they have a good attitude. They're happy to be there. So I'm, I'm very impressed with them. I think uh, we're in a difficult time right now with the military because of all the cutbacks, and uh, especially for the experienced folks, they're the ones that are, I think, struggling right now to keep a good attitude because of the cutbacks. And they're not just cutting back, but they're, I mean, they're really cutting back. I, I was at the War College recently in Montgomery, Alabama, and these are all the top lieutenant colonels and colonels in the Air Force. Not all of them, but they're selected from them. And two of them were just uh, selected to be uh, retired. Just that's it. You're going home. 
uh, right out of the school there. So very unusual the way that the cuts, these uh, uh, retirements and cuts of people are happening right now. So just your thoughts on, you know, Benghazi and what happened in Benghazi uh, overall. Well, I'm really concerned. Uh, you know, it's starting to look more and more like there is a cover-up. There's a, uh, uh, this recent email that they've uncovered, I think, points to what many of us had thought all along, that for political reasons there was uh, uh, an effort to try to make the attack in Benghazi about the video, t- uh, the, the video and not about what it really was about, to kind of divert that with a presidential election coming. And that seems logical, and it seems like um, to what probably has happened, and a lot of stonewalling there, it seems, so... You know, I don't want to get too political on it, but I think it's something we all do need to be concerned about because uh, it really gets back to this issue of honor, Martha. My book, Leading with Honor, it's a, it is, that title really is designed to call out this word honor and to recognize the courage and the honor of these leaders that we had in Vietnam that took torture to do the right thing. And today it seems like people just want to do whatever they can to get by to make themselves look good and protect themselves. And we see that in everything from the Atlanta schools to the New York congressman recently who had been a Secret Service guy and a military guy. And, uh, you know, so on both sides of the aisle we see problems with this. Of people just doing dishonorable things. Colonel Lee Ellis, the book is Leading with Honor. Martha Zoller, make a note. This guy's a good guest. Let's get him back on at some point in the very near future. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you, guys. Good talking to you again. 843, George's Morning News. Yeah, good guy and a good guest and a great story to tell. I don't say this often. I'll go out and read that book. Uh, Martha Zoller.